Okay, this has nothing to do with the episode, but I thought that on Trek, Trek Yards they had a fascinating th thing on, on the sport drive and Discovery, and they're kind of spoofing it. Um, <laughs> so I thought to chime in briefly on a, on a, little, a, a little thing just for uh, how warp drive and warp drive works. Okay. Mm. I won't get it out because it looks like a, a, a something else. It isn't, though. It's just warp drive. So, uh, yeah, do we have, in Star Trek, we have something that's magical called the warp drive. And it allows the ship to travel faster than light through subspace. It pushes a hole through subspace, allowing the ship to traverse the universe to get where they want to go uh, at warp speeds. Uh, uh, Star Trek says it's a matter-antimatter containment type of deal the original series uh, posited that they used lithium, but then they changed it, because lithium was a real element, to dilithium. Like the like early episodes, they called it lithium. And because uh, lithium is, is a real thing. But lithium is a gas, kind of sort of inert, unreactive gas. Um, <laughs> lithium is a gas. Uh, and, uh, and and really couldn't be used to power a ship. It would be inert. Uh, keep that word inert in mind. Um, so, so they knew something about what its properties were, and they knew well a little atomic. I think there's a little radiation involved, but uh, but I'm not really a, a scientist. I'm a Star Trek fan, but uh, but I know something about the, how the warp drive works, Mr. Scott. All right. knew in the classic Trek, the lithium crystals were fairly rare, which they don't address in Discovery. They just ignore that, even though Discovery takes place earlier. Um, and and they uh, they had to uh, get them and mine them on different planets. Different different races had them. Humans and Klingons and the Romulans used something similar, but they used a singularity drive uh, to posit the same kind of thing. It, it's magic. Uh, Arthur C. Clarke, the famous uh, famous uh, sci-fi writer, wrote any sufficient technology should be indistinguishable from magic. Uh, the Q, for instance, uh, this this harkens to the Q with their ability to traverse space and time without warp drive. They can just physically transport. In a way, Discovery, their new transporters in Discovery, in the distant future, are like Q. They can go back and forth, um, and uh, but but not exactly over long distances, not very long distances. Um, we're presuming the Q are just from a century slightly ahead of that. But they can do that. Uh, yeah, so uh, warp drive works by uh, causing a warp bubble, like a Nakuberi drive, uh, and and the, the, in the warp bubble, your ship it doesn't go warp speed. The warp bubble pushes the ship through the universe, through subspace, along the warp bubble, like riding a surfboard toward its destination. Uh, we haven't been able to produce a warp drive. Uh, our technology is, is rocket propulsion. And we could, there could be a long rabbit hole about that, but I wanted to tackle the, the, the different warp drives. So, in the Star Trek movies, they had they have the the uh, the Klingon ship has, has to go in Star Trek Four. The Klingon ship they had to go, Kirk and crew had to go back in time to get to recrystallize the lithium crystal using nuclear energy to recrystallize it. Kind of doesn't make sense unless you figured that they must have used. The, uh, the photon particles to turn lithium into dilithium using uh, radioactive elements. Kind of kind of makes sense. It's silly, but it kind of makes sense. It's like, okay, they went back to 20, they went to back to 1986 Earth and they used the elements that were on 1986 Earth to resynthesize a dilithium crystal so they could get back in time there present. That's actually very clever. It's, it's uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's that. Well, it works. It, it kind of doesn't make sense if you analyze it as some kind of scientist, but is it science fiction? Sure, they could do that. Um, in the next generation, 78 years after the original crew, they've learned how to make synthetic dilithium using using the replicators, because they can replicate anything, even the lithium. And the lithium, all they had to do was check and ask Michael D Michael Kuda, D D or, or Mr. Scott's Guide to the Galaxy, as a reference, well, they could have checked all of those. Uh, they could have checked every alpha, any of the, you type in dilithium, they could have Googled it. It's correct on the Google page, too. Um, 
but yeah, good, uh, dilithium is inert. It's it's a it's a magic device that's used to channel the flow of matter and antimatter together, and not not cause them to annihilate each other. Because if they actually touched, they would annihilate each other. So it keeps it it keeps it from blowing up the ship, basically. So think about that as well. Um, so um, yeah, and if those two elements were about to touch and cause a warp core breach. Call a warp core breach. Think nuclear reactor. There are current times at a nuclear reactor. You wouldn't pull the magnetic bottles apart. You wouldn't crack open a nuclear reactor to stop a nuclear reactor breach. You would shut it off so that it didn't. Elements didn't connect to each other. You turn it off. You'd turn everything down. Close all the doors. Make sure it doesn't blow up. So Discovery having engines that separate from the ship to avoid burn tech makes no sense. That would just popping the top off a reactor and letting the antimatter spill out into space, which would breach the core and blow the ship to pieces. Yeah, the only way that any of Discovery works in the 32nd century period is it's silly Trek and it's not really Star Trek. It's silly in space, and they're all just hanging around silly in space. Okay, fine. Even there, even in even in my fan films, I wouldn't do that. Um, but, but they had a little bit of the stuff out there. Um, they just copied whatever they could find. Video game tardigrade, giant tardigrade attack thing. Uh, Dune. He did. Stamets is basically the guy from Dune. Uh, what originally happened with the creation of Discovery is that they really thought it was cool that there was a guy named Stamets who... They were Canadians. <laughs> they were a little bit of Canadian. And, and, and there's a Stamets guy, and he was... Um, uh, he, I think he's still around. He was a he was a 21st century uh, spore expert. Spore, and uh, they named Paul Stamets kind of after him. Well, his last name after him. Uh, his character is completely different, but they named him after him. Um, and they just liked the idea of shrooms. Well, you know, Canadians with those shrooms. Nom, 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 nom. Dude. Okay, yeah, that's probably what they were thinking. Also, the the the, uh, the Dune. Um, he's the only one that can do it. He's the Dune guy. I'm making him super powered or something. He's the he's, he's the guild navigator basically. They dropped the Tardigrade thing like a hot potato after that video game thing came up. <laughs> Issues with that. Um, but but then they then they made Stamets like the the only one in the fleet that can do it. And like and now the new one, they dropped that like a hot potato right in the first episode, saying, oh, "Okay, we're not going to develop the sport drive in the future." And as I commented on the Trekyard site, uh, they wouldn't do that because uh, he's a. Uh, th the Spore Drive would be centuries behind them. That should have been the real reason for that scene. They should have been like, "Oh, how a how antiquated! You have a Spore Drive. That's that's cute." It would be equivalent to having the Antikythera device and having built a new one. A, a Greek. Uh, it's a Greek astral calendar. Having reconstructed this slightly inaccurate Greek astral calendar from thousands of years ago, and and going like, oh yeah, um, we're going to use this to, to detect uh, the planets, the movements of the planets. Um, uh, no, no, you're not, because um, it ain't going to work. <laughs> we aren't going to want this in, in our current century. It's not going to work. It's a relic. Uh, so yeah, they should have treated that scene like, oh, sport drive is a relic, and and we even a new version of it. We don't need it because we can do instant transporters. So clearly we have that tech already. Yeah, the burn, uh, even though they did it in that one season, uh, the, when they first introduced the century, makes absolutely no sense, if you think about the, the properties of dilithium. Now when Praxis exploded in, in Star Trek, Praxis blew up, it wasn't the dilithium that exploded. If you go back to Star Trek VI, Maybe they just saw that and thought, oh, well, what if the whole, all the ships exploded with Medulithium? That isn't what caused the, uh, the, the Praxis moon to explode. They, they were using overmining and insufficient safety precautions. So it isn't the Dilithium that blew up, it's all the mining equipment that blew up. Yeah, the mines, did, the mines are not, it's not a radioactive nuclear element, it's an inert element, it's, a, it's an atomic element. It, it, it as gas, and then it's crystal in Star Trek, even though it doesn't make sense. But that's fine. It makes more sense than the mycelian network. The mycelian network is the mycelian network. Sounds like cilian. That's the same thing. It's spelled differently, but sounds like silly Trek right there. Cilian Realm Network. They were using the Cilian Realm Network. They the shrooms. 
Uh, I don't think I've ever done psychedelics, but mmm, probably shouldn't, because weird enough as it is. Mmm. But yes, um, clearly, clearly, and I don't blame it on the writers of the show necessarily, because the producer signed off on the scripts. As a writer, sci-fi writer, uh, I, I, they signed off on the script, so it's like, yeah, they're not, you know, a showrunner. Uh, the showrunners are the ones that did it. That previous, that, you know, Kurtzman and them. They did the new, the new showrunners this season just ran with whatever the other guys did, and kind of tried to drop it. Okay, so in a, in a, in a nutshell, the burn should never have happened because why would the all of the the lithium go inert, causing the ships to explode? What they probably should have said was the magnetic bottles on the ship went inert and blew up the ships. It wasn't the dilithium, because that wouldn't blow up. It's, it's, it's a stable element that keeps matter and antimatter in subspace, in real space. It's, it's a magical element, yes, similar to the shroom drive, but, it, but it, it, it's inert by, by its nature. It's, it's solid. You can pick it up and bring it over in the ground, allegedly. Probably shouldn't actually pick up lithium gas, though. Don't ingest that. that that's a bad idea. And don't do that. You'll die. Don't do that. <laughs> but in crystalline form with gloves on, you probably can. Yeah. yeah. Since nobody can actually touch crystalline lith lithium, it, it, you can't. It, there isn't, it doesn't exist. But um, <clears throat> it makes more sense in a shroom drive. Why didn't they just say... You know what they should have done back in the day? They should have said that Stamets had developed transwarp before it was actually a thing. And it was just, it's just transwarp. No shrooms, nothing like that, just a faster warp drive. That's what they should have done. That way, when it went on to the future, they could have just said, well, they, maybe they had started in the future. I would have started the whole series in the 32nd century and just gone on from there. I would have, actually, I would have said it in the Picard era. I would have said it in the future. Because the ship was clearly more advanced than, than anything from now. And put it on for the future. So I did my own, and I called it Starship Chimera, and then I called it Starship Locations, and it makes a whole lot more sense, but that's a fanfic, you know. <laughs> and I think Discovery is like a fanfic. It's somebody's fanfic version of Star Trek. It's not really... Even Strange New Worlds is a fanfic version of Star Trek. This is not the Enterprise that I grew up on. This is clearly not that. Um, yeah, I grew up in Next Generation, so <laughs> I was a teenager when Next Generation started. Roughly the same age as Will Wheaton and and Shannon Phil and uh, and Nicole Devour somewhere in there. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, um, so I would have been you know, on Lower Decks as, as a cadet in the original, and on the show Lower Decks, yeah, uh, I would have been a little older. Yeah, <laughs> would have been because that was set in 22, 2380. I'd be like uh, 2380 is equivalent to roughly 2003, 2004. So I would have been. 30, 33, somewhere around there. <laughs> Would have been a little higher than the Lord. But, but yeah, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so, so, yeah, the dilithium could not have exploded, the burn could not have happened. Also, because the Kelpian child was not a Q. They were treating the dilithium as a nuclear reactant of some kind, and it isn't. It's inert. So, it wouldn't have done that. So, you can't channel the dilithium using your mind powers to blow up all the dilithium in the galaxy by accident because you were sad. That makes no sense. It's his name was Sue Cal, named after a Cal Cat character. Uh, there was a Cal in that episode, named after a Cal Cat character. Uh, I, I didn't know they did that. That's interesting. But <laughs> but um, at the time, but but I was I was pleased to know there was a Cal in there with a K. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. I look at my original name. There's a, there's a brown with an e in uh, my actual real name. My last name. Uh, there's a brown with an e in the classic track. It was a distant cousin. Uh, but yes, um, yeah, she kissed Spock. Excellent. So yeah, <laughs> it's a bit brown. No. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, she died long enough. Ago. Um, she was a contemporary of Grace Lee Whitney. Anyway. So <laughs> But, 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 yeah, um, so, let's see, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, and, and I'm, yeah, clearly not related to Robbie Duncan McNeil, even though I look a little like him. Yeah, not related to him. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, the dilithium, um, yeah, is, is inert, so, uh, 
thrum drive makes no sense. It would be antiquated to them. That's what they should have said when they got there. It's like, oh, we have the, I have this mycelium network thing, and I use this room drive to power my ship and whatever. And they're all, oh, how cute. That's antiquated. It's really old. Actually, if anything, they should have said, we're going to send you back to your timeline because you're going to, because you're going to learn too much about the future. They have to send them back to their timeline. They have to go back to the 2250s because, yeah, they, they, it, it, it's, uh, yeah, they, they have to do that. Temporal, temporal effect edict or something. Uh, something like Cronenberg is in it too. But yeah, you, 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 yeah, yeah, it's in her. It's not the, the lithium cannot explode. Yeah, the the moon praxis blew up because the reactants that were used to make the the mining equipment and stuff that blew up. Whatever nuclear things they were using, and there was a parable for Chernobyl. Yeah, and then currently Chernobyl is covered over in a large, like, like lead-lined uh, thing they'd covered over the reactor, but the town is still screwed. Or so we're over in the Ukraine, so... Yeah, nobody can go over there. It's still screwed. It's all mutated and messed up. Um, they covered it over in a big dome, basically. Uh, yeah, because, yeah, a reactor... Yeah, re uh, having a reactor and then separating the engines from the reactor would cause a warp core breach, so their whole technology makes no sense. They, they, they shouldn't do that. There should be more, the engines should be closer and more sealed and put in there so they would go, yeah, uh, the, the lithium blowing up, yeah, that whole that whole premise makes no sense in the Star Trek universe. Um, <laughs> subspace doesn't do that. Uh, the Kelpian kid wasn't necessarily a Q, it was just that somehow the, the, the nebula was making his powers grow or something, which really makes no sense. Why would he have powers? I mean, the other the other Kelpians don't have powers. Why does he have powers? It doesn't make any sense. What I would have done there is I would have said that he wasn't a Kelpian. He actually was a Q. And he just got, went rogue and decided to blow up the Federation for whatever reason. That would have made more sense. All they had to do was rewrite that. So they was like, you know, uh, actually an evil alien entity. I've been fucking with the Federation for 50 years. Ha 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 ha. You know, all right, all right, fine. And then they, then they arrest him. That's what they should have done. But they didn't think of that. Because um, they didn't want to make it another con story. Because of the other one. They didn't want to make another alien story. And then that alien story with the aliens messing up the universe ended up to be the next season. So they went with that idea. But, yeah. Uh, uh, and then it turned out, oh, they had like a thing. Now, they, now they're doing on the edge of the galaxy, which doesn't make any sense so they could even get there. Um, <laughs> um, well, the sport drive. And some of the people in the comments were suggesting, oh, they should go t traverse galaxies with it. No, no, don't go to the Andromeda galaxy and beyond. The galaxy is plenty big enough, even in the 32nd century. You don't need to do that. Yeah. Um, don't know or some other galaxy or whatever you, you, you can't really yeah equate that to anything if you start to go too far out into space it becomes convoluted anyway that's my two cents on on the, the warp drive the mycelium network was a dumb idea they should have never went there oh he grows space rooms and how can he handle the space rooms if they're if they act like the lithium but stronger they would explode because they're obviously reactant. They're, they're, not, they're not a non-reactant. They grow. They're obviously uh, producing some kind of radiation in the story. That would be really bad. It would be like having like, like living nuclear reactors like living in your pod bay on the ship. And they, and they, it, that would be bad. Everybody would be cooked. So the mycelium network would be dangerous. It would, be the, it would cause the burn. That, maybe that's what they should have done. If they should have said, okay, the burn wasn't wasn't caused by the lithium exploding. It was that we were all using the spore drive, and that caused everything to explode. There. <laughs> but yes, um, so that's my two cents on the lithium. <laughs>